Hello my darlings, welcome back to my channel. Today we're having a little girl talk. We are talking all things boys and friendships. I think those are the two main topics in the questions and dilemmas that I got today. It was really, really fun. I did this makeup. It's less about the makeup, to be honest with you guys. It's more about the questions and the dilemmas. Good old chinwag, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Some of the topics, some of the questions, some of the statements were very, very interesting. Um, I hope you guys love it. We'd love to hear, as always, your thoughts in down below. If you have any advice to our questioners, then leave them down below as well. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you at the end. Okay, enjoy. <laughs> In the name of saving time, I have done my brows and my hair off camera. If you wanna know how I do both of those, I'm looking at my phone, getting your questions up. If you wanna know how I do either of those, then just go ahead and check out my last um, makeup tutorial or my last get ready with me which will be linked here is it on this side or is it on that side i just cannot remember these days okay it's linked on one of those sides can't remember i have a feeling it's this side so check it out up here i'm just looking for your questions okay we're doing a chit chat girly vibes i asked my instagram fam to ask me questions if you ever want to send me questions dilemmas any of that good stuff just um head on over to my now why can't i find the questions <laughs> If you ever want to send me questions and dilemmas, just head over to my um, Instagram. I just asked it sporadically. There's never any rhyme or reason. Okay, now where is it? Here we go. Okay, I've got it. Dilemmas or general girly questions. Okay, so that's the vibe for today. Because I'm not doing it in like sections, one minute I might be talking about boys, the next minute I might be talking about careers. The next minute I might be talking about vacations. We will see, okay, for skin. Okay, because I wanna do the questions, I'm not gonna to talk too much about products, what's going on on my face, but as it's already here, I use the Skin Protectant, it's like a balm from Elizabeth Arden. This always gets used on me on shoots, and I recently got one, so that's what I use on my hands mainly to moisturize my hands, and then I just put the remnants on my face. Lovely glow. And for SPF today, I use the Ultraviolet SPF 50. This is a spray. I like that. I use my usual Super Goop everyday lotion. And then I just went over it with this and then I did this. So that's my skin prep for today. And now we're going to do foundation, but let's get into the first question. Oh, the first question right off the bat. How do you get back into the dating scene? This is a hard question. Um, except from saying, put yourself out there. I don't know how else to say that. And by put yourself out there, it, I don't necessarily mean like you have to go approach guys all the time. I just mean like put yourself in environments where you can be around men to approach you or women, whatever your flavor is. I think that's the easiest way. Oftentimes we recluse after a bad situation, which is completely understandable. But sometimes the best thing to do is just put yourself back out there when you're ready, of course. That might be going to parties, going to little kickbacks where you know there's gonna be, you know, mixed genders, after work drinks, just being outside of your home and being in environments where, you know, men can approach you on vacation, anywhere really, even like random places. I get um, approached in the most random places, gym, supermarket, in traffic. The other day I was in traffic and this guy tapped my window and he was like, oh, sorry to disturb you, I just want to tell you that you look really pretty. So you can get approached in the most random of places. That is a beautiful combination, sorry. I just mixed the Makeup Mar by Mario. What is this, the Surreal Skin Foundation with my NARS Natural Longwear Macau. You know, I'm, ugh, I can never be too far from natural longwear. That looks so beautiful on my skin. And I didn't even use too much. A lot of it is still on the back of my hand. I don't know if that was a good answer, but the easiest way is to get back in is to physically take yourself back in there. If you are an apps person, you can also jump on apps if that's your flavor. I know apps isn't for everyone. So if you're a person that doesn't mind interacting with people online, then you know, download dating apps. So many people, there's like a running joke, I'm sure people say, oh, re-downloaded Hinge. And if you're unsure of dating apps, there is Hinge, there's Bumble, there is, I don't know if people still use Tinder, um, Thursday, or is it Monday? 
There's a whole bunch of dating apps. I'm sure if you just Google it, there's a whole bunch there. If you don't want to do the physical straight off the bat, you can also start by doing the um, online vibe. If that's your flavor. Everyone has their different flavors. I need to wipe this lip balm off before it migrates. Next question while I blend out my concealer. How do I get over an ex who was living a double life for six years? I feel like I can't trust again. That is absolutely insane. Do you know the thing is? With breach of trust. Breach of trust, in my opinion, is not something that you can will yourself to get over. Because trust is one of those things that trust situations like that it's one of those things where something may happen to you and you feel like you've gone past it and then a situation that's seemingly unrelated happens and it triggers you and it takes you back to a place that you feel like you've grown from and that's the issue with trying to will yourself to move past the situation or to force yourself to heal from something before your mind and your body actually has the time to and sometimes you know some people they can heal from something in a month. Other people need years. Focus less on how do I do this and focus more on what can I do, little actionable things every day that make me feel better about myself or that make me feel good about myself. Because what will happen is if you take it day by day, one day you'll wake up and it's been a month or it's been six months and you think about the situation less or it hurts you less or maybe the smell that reminds you of that person reminds you less of that person. But you have to take it day by day, babe. Honestly, you have to take it day by day. And with me, if something upsets me or if someone takes me to a place that triggers me, instead of trying to be like, oh, I'm not bothered, I, I don't care, I let myself sit in those feelings. I do care, I am bothered, I don't like this. I don't like the way this makes me feel. I don't like being in, in this situation. Number one, remove yourself from the situation. Number two, you have, if you have to mute them, if you have to block them, if you have to remove your them from your physical world then do that because the worst thing is trying to act like the bigger person and being like oh it's fine like i don't really care and you're re-triggering yourself every day it just keeps you in that place for longer and longer and longer does this thing actually bother me okay it does let me remove reminders of that person from my life cool that's done and then let me do things that make me happy i love the gym gym is a great distraction if gym isn't your thing maybe going for walks if that's not your thing going to the cafe spending time with your friends just doing things each day even if it's just one thing a day that distracts your mind from it if you want to do that for an hour and then you want to come home and cry for the rest of the night i feel like that is fine but what will happen is eventually the amount of time that you cry for gets less and the amount you think of that person gets less and then the time that you spend with your friend becomes more. Maybe you might meet someone else. Situation just changes gradually. Nothing ever really just changes like that, you know? Let yourself hurt, be in that. Do not try and rationalize that person's behavior. Do not try and be like, oh, they did this because of that or X happened because of Y. Sometimes it did happen because of that. And sometimes it didn't. Sometimes people are just shitty people and there is no explanation for their shit. They're just not nice people. And the worst thing women do is try and make that about them. You're trying to make someone else's shortcomings about you. And more time, babe, he would have probably did that to someone else. He's probably been done that to someone else, you know? Most shit people are not shit in isolation, okay? They're just not good people. And that has nothing to do with you. That has nothing to do with me. They would have been the same to someone that you think is pretty or to someone that you think has a better life than you. What? They're just not good people, okay? And like I said, that has nothing to do with you. And I'm sure your friends have already told you that before. Someone that can live a double life like that is scary, okay? Scary behavior. I just think people that have to be use deception to get what they want. There's something up here, in here. There's a disconnect, okay? Nothing to do with you. Which I'm sure you know. Do you know what's crazy? I usually do contour first. I don't know why I did concealer first today, but... That's where we are. I love these little trivial questions because they absolutely send me. Someone said, would I date someone my height? I wouldn't, yeah. But here's the thing. There's a lot of things that I would do that other people would not do. And there's a lot of things that other people would do that I would not do. The key is to just do what makes sense for you. There's people I date. I was literally just thinking about this. There's people I date. There's people I entertain that my friends are just like, question marks are just rotating around their head they just don't get it but it's not about whether you get it or not it's about whether i fuck with it and if i fuck with it then who the hell cares you know what i mean if you really don't care that much about the height thing but you hear other people talking about the height thing and then you now feel like that's something you should care about 
if a person ticks everything for you, but it's the hype that you're, you know, shaken about, then I don't know. But like I said, there's a lot of things that I would do that people that I know wouldn't, and there's a lot of things that people I know would do that I wouldn't do. What it comes down to is being happy about the situation you're in and about being with that person, and that's really the long short of it. But no, I would not date someone my <laughs> But that's just me. I, that's just not really my destiny, you know? I'm staying in a very passive aggressive... I'm staying with a very passive aggressive roommate and find her very draining. What shall I do? Ooh. See these situations here? Passive aggressive people. I can't be around passive aggressive people. I cannot do it. And I don't know if you've... I, I would assume you've already been like, what's going on? But you see passive aggressive, passive aggressive doesn't work with me because then I'm gonna get really aggressive. Oh my goodness. If you're gonna do passive aggressive with me, I'm just gonna get mad direct. And now we're both looking at each other. Cause I hate that when people aren't mature enough or people aren't secure enough in themselves to just be like, oh, you know, this thing you did, I don't really mess with that. Can you not do that again? And I'm so, I'm very sensitive to energies and I'm very sensitive to change behavior. And when people try and gaslight me, talking about some, oh, everything's fine. Everything isn't fine, cause you're moving weird. Sometimes I'm gonna move, if you move weird, I'll move out of the way. But other times if you move weird, I'm gonna come to you head front, like what is going on? Like what is the problem? Like what is this really all about? Because the issue with passive aggression is, you let it slide, you let it slide, you let it slide. And then there's like a, big thing and something that could have actually been quite little is now turned into something huge that didn't need to be this big it's like when you get a hole in your tights and you don't you know put a sealant on it and it just rips 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 and now you've got a massive hole why you could have just dealt with it from jump that's why i don't really mess with passive aggressive people because it doesn't need to be all of that i say all that to say my advice is just to address it head on with difficult conversations the hardest part is initiating it but it's really as simple as saying, I've noticed like a change in your energy or, you know, we haven't really spoken this week. Is there anything you want to discuss with me? Or I kind of noticed you've been avoiding me. Did I do something? What I actually really like doing is asking people, is there something going on in your life at the moment? Or is there something that you're going through? Because sometimes it has nothing to do with the UK. Sometimes they're just going through some stuff and they just kind of need a minute, which is fine. But nothing gets resolved about a conversation starter. So I'm always like, okay, Greg, sis, you good? Kind of notice a change in your in your energy. Kind of notice that we haven't been speaking as much. Are we good? The other thing you could do is move out, but I assume that's not really a <laughs> option here. Or you'd have just moved out and asked me. So yeah, defo address that head on. Because who likes passive aggression? Like when people do that, I'm just like, is this necessary? Is it? No. Oh, drifted from my best friend, but she's invited me to her wedding this summer. Should I go? Yes. If you have just drifted from someone, that's different from you had a situation with someone or there was some sort of falling out or you had some sort of like altercation and now you guys aren't friends and it's like a whole thing. If you just drifted then, and she's extended the invitation, she obviously still values you in her life to some degree. If you feel like you're gonna feel weird going to her wedding have, because you haven't spoken to her in a little bit, that's easily fixable. You can literally just be like, hey, you know, accept the wedding invitation. Be like, it'd be cool to catch up before the wedding just to see, just to hear how everything is going. Would love to catch up. So it's not like that's the first time you're seeing her in however many weeks or months. That's my advice. But let me just tell you something. If you don't go, that sends a larger message, especially if you don't have an issue with her. If you've only just drifted then, but if you decline the wedding invitation, it's gonna seem like you have an issue with her. Even if you don't, because you know what people are like. I'm sure you'd do the same, I'd be the same. I'd be like, oh right, like, are we beefing? What's going on? Because in normal circumstances, you would have gone. But now because you haven't spoken, and now you're even saying that she's having a wedding, maybe she's just so busy and focused on that, she hasn't had as much time to invest in your friendship. Nothing wrong with that. But again, everything starts with a conversation of, oh, would be nice to catch up, haven't seen each other in a while. You can even say, I'd love to come. I don't want the first time I've seen you in X amount of time to be at the wedding. So let me know when you're free. Would love to hear about how things are going. 
Something like that, you know? Let's divorce ourselves from the idea that everything, and not to say this isn't about that situation specifically, but this is a secondary note to say, let's divorce ourselves from the idea that everything that's happening in people's lives are like about us. You know, because more time, I'm just doing my thing. And you're just doing your thing. It just happens that we haven't done our thing in a hot minute. And it just takes one person to be like, hey, I miss you, Let, let's do something soon. That's it. I was supposed to put on liquid blush. It's good, it's fine, it's fine. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Oh, this one I get asked a lot. How do you plan things with your friends? I've been trying to plan stuff with mine, but it's stressful. It is stressful, don't get me, I'm sorry, not to say that I'm stressed, but planning things with a big group is stressful. It requires a certain level of, where is my tweezer? Let me just pop this up first before I carry on speaking. Planning things with big groups is not the easiest thing, okay? For a plethora, plethora of reasons, different financial situations, different availability, different work schedules, you know, I have quite a flexible schedule because I have a flexible job. Everyone doesn't have that, you know? So I think you need to be understanding of these things when it comes to planning things with your friends. The easiest things to plan are pre-event. If for example, there is an event or a party or whatever, it's just a case of drop it in the group chat, who's down, whoever's down books, whoever's down sends their names or whatever, you know, that's patterned. And then obviously the next one is going on vacation. Not everyone is down to do a vacation. Once you gauge who's interested, then you make a group chat. If you are, for example, the one that wants to go the most, it probably, the onus is on you to be like, hey, what's everyone's budget? Send an options for hotels, send an options for flights, Whoever can book when you're ready, just book with them. Everyone else, you book on later. Because the thing is, when you say, when you're waiting for everyone to be ready to book, nine times out of 10, it just won't happen. Okay, so we have an upcoming trip. Me and my friends have an upcoming trip. Made a group chat, put everyone in the group chat. Um, I think some of my other friends in different groups have already booked with like their friends and stuff. So I think my friend was saying, oh, um, flight prices are going up so it was like a Monday and I was like hey guys I'm about to book my flights I think two or three of my other friends booked theirs other people are like okay I'm gonna book mine at this point I'm gonna book mine at that point I say that to say you don't have to wait for everyone to be ready if a few people are ready you only need two other people or one other person everyone else can book on when they're ready all of my big trips I've ever done with people unless it's a vibe of um you know deposit and then installment pays more time people just book when they're ready and whoever comes comes and that is the vibe don't lose out on things waiting for everyone to be ready because you just won't go <laughs> and that's the tea of it i don't even hold people because at the time that you're talking about things i'm sure everybody wants to go but circumstances change people change i've had people book onto things that just couldn't come in the end you can't really hold people or hold it against people that's just do you know what i mean that's just life circumstances change all the time i really like this if you are heavy-handed when it comes to bronzer this nars um bronzing powder it literally just looks like this is so good and having used this i've realized now how pigmented my charlotte tilbury one is this is less pigmented but it works because it's really buildable i should have done one on both sides but ah well it's done now uh where's my little brush i was just using because now i've got some bronzer on my chin Okay, there we go. Ooh, this beat is so beautiful. Okay, next question. Ooh, girl code. Discussion on girl code, friends dating exes, does the length of the relationship or closeness of the friend matter? Let me tell you something, yeah? You see these kind of situations, these kind of topics, it's good to talk about with your friends. So people know where you stand and people know your boundaries. My friends wouldn't date anyone I've dated anyway, because is that not weird? I also wouldn't date anyone that my friends have dated, right? I wouldn't even date anyone that my friends have spoken to, because that's just not how, I don't play that. If you date someone that I dated in like secondary school, I don't really care. I'd be confused, but I don't really care. But ultimately, let me just put my blush on. This blush 
a girl was talking about this on TikTok the other day, how much she loves this blush and she got it because of me. It's so good. Um, Cherish from Pat McGrath. Gorgeous. Still so obsessed with it, like. The way blush brings the face together, gorgeous. Anyways, um, I'm saying all this to say, I don't really mess with all that like dating your friends, exes, ex concubines, ex, ex tings, ex links, ex blah, 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 like why? Do you know how many men, women, people are in this world? Why would I go and date someone that my friend used to chat to? Especially if it's like a close friend. If it's just an acquaintance, I, I really don't care too much, but I'm talking about like my close friends, like my homies. No, cause it's weird. Because now why am I sitting here hearing all of the things that you and my ex are doing? I just don't really care to hear all that. So why would, no, okay. Even if the, the earth was sparse, like I'm saying there's no more, there's no more dudes around. I still just wouldn't date someone that my friend has dated. And I just wouldn't want my friends to date. God, see how much deeper that is than the Nars one. But I just use it to add like a little bit of definition right at the end. Anyway, yeah, I don't play that. Okay, I'm gonna keep it a buck. Okay. I don't play any of that dating my ex, dating someone I used to talk to, dating like, like no, no, I don't play that. But other people don't mind. That's why I'm like, it's important to talk to people about their boundaries on things like this. Because I had a friend who she really didn't care. She was like, okay, but that could be the love of your life. But I'm like, there's no way my love of my life would be your ex. That's just, that's just not how my, you know, my, that's just not my ministry, okay? And these are questions that you should ask people because it's so funny. Um, I had a games night at my place one time with like a mixed group of girls. So some of the girls were my friends and some of the girls were like mutual friends. Friends of, you know, friends of friends. And we played this game about, I think the question was something to do with, would you sleep with someone that your friend has dated or would you sleep with like your friend's ex? And most of us were really like, no. <laughs> All of us, in fact, were like, no. But one person was like, yeah, I don't see there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, me, someone like that, you and I just can't be close friends because that's in direct violation of one of my very strong boundaries. And alignment in friendship is just as important as alignment in relationships. I don't even bother asking guys, would you, date, would you sleep with one of my friends or would you date one of my friends? I don't care, okay? My alliance is not to men. My alliance is to women. It's more important that my friends know that I don't play that shit. I don't care if a man would or wouldn't. I just wouldn't play that shit, okay? And in the same vein, I also probably wouldn't really like mess with someone that was super close. <laughs> it's funny I'm saying this, right? Because there was this guy that I used to see around a lot this is so funny, I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. There was this guy I used to see around a lot and I just thought he was cute, right? And that was it. Didn't really know him. I just used to see him around a lot. And then there was this guy that I dated for a few months. Um, that's all I can say. I don't want to, I was just about to give you more information about him, but I can't give you more information about him because it gives away too much of who he is. And you can just never be careful, never be too careful, right? Anyways, this guy that I used to date for a little bit, um, it wasn't even serious. We were just like, went on a few dates, spent time together, blah, 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 right? And then one time, I saw them together. And guys, when I tell you, I, it was so head spinning to me that they would be together because I wasn't putting together the equation of how they were friends, right? It only took me one time to see them together. Now I see them together all of the time. And I was just like, aggressive eye roll. That means that I can never date you know, that, I mean, there's other reasons now I can't date him anyway, but I was just like, damn, well, that's annoying. I can't date him now because he's friends with blah, blah, blah. And there's been other situations where I've thought, I've thought, I have thought, is that correct English? Yeah, there's been other situations where I'm like, oh, you know, he's kind of all right. And then my friends are like, yeah, but you know, if you ever do anything with him, this guy is going to be fuming. 
So that stops me doing stuff for people, okay? That is enough for me to not do some stuff for people. And there's people that I've dated that, you know, were cool. So I wouldn't date anyone that they were friends with. But if we dated and we don't speak anymore, and then I find out after I've been talking to someone that that's, you know, your friend, not to be confused with like best friend or close friend. If I just find out that you guys are cool, I'm probably not gonna stop dating that person. But if I find out that that's your homie, yeah, I have to I have to lock it off. Um, yeah, I gotta lock it off to be honest. But that's just me. This was a very long-winded way of saying, I don't play that. And I also don't believe in being close friends with people that do play that, because that means that we're not aligned. There's a misalignment. Because then if they do something like that, you can't even be surprised because you already knew what they were on, okay? So keep company around you that makes sense for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this makeup has turned out so cute. It looks like all of my other 500,000 makeups, but do you know what this looks like? This looks like that latte makeup that's trending at the moment on the Clock app. Leave it to the Clock app to rename something that's been around for so long. They love doing that on the app. They love it. Oh, this is a good one. How to be a good friend when you are pinching your pennies not available to spend and travel. This is such an important topic, right? Because there's this misconception that friendship is a monolith and the only way you can be present is in certain ways. And the only way you can build closeness and build connection is through going out or drinking or going on a holiday or doing this or doing that. It's not true. There are so many ways to be a good friend that don't necessarily revolve in re revolve around spending a lot of money. I say a lot of money because the current climate that we're living in, it's just really hard to do anything without spending money. Even if I have the girls over, I need to go and buy, you know, supplies. So we have something to eat and drink, you know? So it's hard to do nothing without spending money, but there are definitely many ways that you can be present. The first one I can think about off the back of my head, off the top of my head, is doing something indoors. And actually with me and my friends, it got to a point where we were just like, guys, can we just do things that don't revolve around, where have I just put that brush? You know when you put something down and it just vanishes into, oh here. Can we just do things that don't revolve around going out? Or that don't revolve around drinking? Or that don't revolve around this? And it's just, you know, movie nights, games nights. We, me and my lot, we love a games night. <laughs> So we'll do a games night, either with us or invite some of the guys. It's a really cute indoor vibe. People bring drinks. Everyone brings like their own share of stuff. So it's not all the pressure isn't on the person hosting. And we have a good time. Or randomly, my friend will be like, guys, what's everyone doing tonight? Do you wanna come mine? Really low lift way of spending time with your friends. And actually, I prefer indoor vibes. I prefer Games, nice, indoor vibes, because I just like being comfortable, I like being chill. Don't get me wrong, I love going out, I love having a little good vibe with my friends, but there's something so nice and comfortable about being indoors with your mates, and you're just chilling, you're laughing, you're dancing, you're crying. One, ugh, if we get out, um, are we really strangers? There's gonna be tears, you know? You're really getting to know things about your friends, particularly things that you wouldn't necessarily know to ask, but when you play, a game like we're not really strangers it forces you to talk about topics that you might not necessarily talk about just like randomly you talk about these things on a daily on a weekly anyway but when you really start digging deep that connection is just so beautiful okay other ways going on walks one time i was so upset and i messaged my friend and he was like i'm gonna be in your area tomorrow do you want to go for a walk and just talk about it you know, things like that. Even if you don't live close to each other, I think he actually doesn't live close to me. He just happened to be in my area and he was like, oh, like we can go for a walk tomorrow and talk about it. Nothing to do with him. It was just like a, a separate situation that was bringing me down, okay? I love picnics in the park because they're just such a nice way. You get loads of little picky bits and just sit in the sun and just enjoy each other's company. Oh no, my spray's not spraying. I'm sad, it's fine. I'm just gonna use my other one and also you can just google things to do free things to do in my city there's always like free exhibitions um if you're from london there's always free exhibitions in london 
like little art installations, going to the cinema. I'm not sure if they still do like two for twos, two for twos on Tuesdays. You know, when you can get like two tickets for the price of one, just little things like that. It doesn't, spending time with your friend doesn't have to be this big expensive occasion. And also being honest with your friends about your financial situation. Don't feel like you have to keep up this facade of, oh, just making excuses every time. You know what guys, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I, the pack can stretch for that this month or the pack can stretch for that this quarter. Part of friendship is honesty and not being, and not feeling like you have to hide things and not feeling like there's shame. We can tell each other, oh, leave that man. We can tell each other, oh, things, other personal things like hygiene things or like sexual things or other very personal things about our lives, but we can't tell our friends when, you know what? It's just a bit tight for me at the moment. That's just not gonna work for me or that's not gonna stretch. Then people will keep in mind that, you know, when we're doing things, we have to do things that work for everyone and make sense for everyone, you know? Just because one person can afford to stay in a five-star hotel doesn't mean that everyone should now be scraping and be t getting all of their money to stay in a five-star hotel. Whether you can or you can't, sometimes it's, I don't wanna do that because that doesn't work for me. Part of friendship is doing, thing that work, doing things that work for everyone and not just like the majority or the minority. It's making sure that it makes sense for everyone across the group. So part of being a good friend to your friend is also being honest about your situation and what you can and can't do as well. I'm about to do some mascara and lashes. Let me do mascara and lashes. That's pretty much my base is done. I got these lashes in America and they are so good. I basically like chopped them and made them into half lashes. I'll show you what they look like. They're the Kiss Couture, well, you know Kiss, the brand Kiss. It's the Lash Couture Naked Drama Full and Fluffy Volume. These are so good. I wish I got more. I'm so mad. And this is in the style Taffeta. This is what they look like, but they just look so beautiful. How much even was this? This was, was the price on it? Girl, no, the price is not on there. But I got this in CVS. Your best friends were very fake behind your back, but loved you and they ghosted you. Then they, then around two months later, they explained what happened and they think everything is fine, but maybe it shouldn't be. I've forgiven them, but how, but do I actively show I don't want a friendship with them? So let's run that again. Your best friends were very fake behind your back and lied and loved you. What does that mean, loved you? Does she mean lied to you? I don't know. Um, and ghosted you. But then around two months later, they explained what happened. Everything's fine, but maybe it shouldn't be. I've forgiven them. But do I actively show I don't want the friendship with them? I think she basically said like her friends were fake, lied to her, ghosted her, but then came back two months later and explained everything. But now she doesn't want the friendship anymore. You guys tell me what you got from that. But that's the general gist that I'm getting from that. And she's asking how... But do I actively... Oh, I've forgiven them, but do I actively show I don't want the friendship with them? With them? Wait, so babe, do you want a friendship with them or do you not? This is some weird stuff. <laughs> not from you. That's weird from their part that they would do that. Um, I'm just removing the lash glue off while I try and digest this situation. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, sorry, I don't want to assume, like, I would love to know how old you guys are. Purely because, I don't know, that would really, I mean, let me not even, let me not even say too much, actually. Number one, anyone that can be fake behind my back, you're already on very, very thin ice, okay? So let's start there. And then not even to include the bit where you ghosted me for two months and then you came back with your explanation and now what, we're trying to act like everything's all good. Listen, let me tell you one thing about it, right? I'm a very understanding person, okay? If you say, oops, you did this, I wasn't messing with that. My first reaction, and this is taking a lot of growth, okay, mind you, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. This is taking a lot of growth, okay? I'm taking a lot of learning and working. Now, if someone comes to me on some, I don't like that you did this, I actually don't even mind if you wanted to wait a bit before you address it with me, because some, you know, some people need time to sit on things before they address it. I have no issues with that, okay? As long as you don't act funny in the meantime, then it's cool. Even if you act funny in the meantime, as long as you're not like rude or disrespectful, it's cool. I'll probably peep that there's an energy. I'll give you time to bring it up. If you address that with me whenever you want to address that with me and you say it, my first reaction off the bat will always be an apology because I believe in validating people's feelings. I don't mean to come at you on that kind of flex, but I'm glad you brought up with me. 
we can discuss it or we can move on. Okay, cool. See what I don't fuck with? I don't fuck with that weird shit, right? You're not about to be very fake behind my back. That's, you are in the wrong in that situation, mind you. And then you're gonna ghost me. And then you're gonna try spin the block. Like say you haven't already committed two offenses. Baby, I'm understanding, I'm not a fool, okay? And you see friendship, I hold friendship like this. If I say you're my homie, that means I hold you like this. And in friendship, with friendships, there's a certain level of understanding and there's a certain level of respect that vibrates both ways. There's a certain level of violation I would never give to my friends and I also would expect that my friends would never violate me on a certain level. Coming with that fake shit, that's already enough for me to be like, allow this friendship, like, allow it. Let's keep our distance. I'm never gonna cut someone off for being fake and be like, oh, I don't fuck with that bitch. No, but I'm just gonna understand this situation and I'm gonna keep my distance. I can be cordial, but you and I will never be close. You and I will never be dogs like that. But I just adjust my level of interaction with you. Cool. Ghosting. You were in the wrong and you ghosted. You see people like that? Why is there glitter on my eye? One of those brushes was definitely contaminated. People that can wrong you and then ghost you and then try to do like, I don't know what the explanation was, but it better be good. Even if it's amazing, do you know how long two months is? Let me do my little ring real quick actually. Two months is a long time to have lost your mind. Let me tell you that right now. About some you already on thin ice and then you ghosted me. Right, cool. Simple little wing, nothing too insane. You see people that don't want to take accountability, they love doing this thing where they victimize themselves as a way of absorbing themselves from taking accountability. The explanation that they gave, I hope it accounted for the reason why they were being fake in the first place, okay? I hope that was accounted for in the explanation that was given. But as far as I'm concerned, you and I, we could have never been friends. If you thought that that behavior was acceptable for you to be fake and then ghost me and then come back and try and act like, oh, okay, cool, let's just like pick up from where we left off. That's just not acceptable. And I'm not saying cut people off, but it's okay to adjust your level of commitment to a friendship until you feel like I, I now feel safe in this friendship. Because I think people under, underestimate how much absence affects someone. And listen, I'm not perfect, but the last thing I'm gonna do is do someone dirty and then ghost them and then try and come around like, I haven't just done the wickedest thing, okay? It sounds like you're not okay with it. And if you're not okay with it, you need to be honest about your feelings. They're not mind readers. And if you say you accept it and you wanna move on, or if you said you've accepted it and it's okay, then that's what they're gonna think. But if it's not okay and you don't accept that behavior, then you need to be honest about that too. These are so nice. And like I said, I just cut them in half to make them half lashes. Look at the difference. Stunning. Ultimately, you need to be honest about how you feel and what you do and don't accept and what is okay and what is not okay for you. And don't feel like, oh, I need to cut you off now. People are allowed to make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. People are allowed to make mistakes and they're also allowed to make amends for their mistakes. Don't let anybody gaslight you to feel like you have to be okay with something that you're not okay with and oh, it's not that big of a deal and oh, it was just this and it was just that. No, I don't play that. I don't like the way you went around that. I'm gonna need a minute before I decide if I actually wanna be close friends with you again. And that's the, like, the truth of the situation. And that's it. Most normal people that have wronged you will be okay with that because they understand that they were in the wrong. People that are trying to gaslight you will try and make you feel like you're being overly sensitive or you're being whatever, whatever. No, baby. I don't even know if this is a dilemma. This is a statement and it is so funny. I'm gonna do my lip first. This man is getting married to another woman and I know he's not over me. Guy, girl, what's your own? <laughs> Like, on a very, like, genuine level, he... Let him worry about that, okay? What you need to worry about is not him. He is getting married. Whether or not he's over you or not, he's still getting married. 
okay? He obviously doesn't care about you that much because he is getting married and it's not to you. Like I said, it was more of a statement than a dilemma. Let's get to a place where our self-worth and our self-confidence is vibrating on such a high level that anything that disrupts that, we just want no, a part of no business in. A person that you think is still in love with you, but is getting married. Imagine if you were the one that he's getting married to. Does this seem like a good man? Does this seem like a man that you want to build a life with? No. This man has other women sending dilemmas. Talking about he's still in love with me. Oh, he's getting married, please. And I feel like we're in a time at the moment where we're being conditioned to, to feel like these little pockets of disrespect. Like people are trying to normalize these little pockets of disrespect and I'm just not with it. I'm not with the whole, oh, but men are gonna cheat anyway. Oh, but you should just be happy because at least it's coming home to, why? When did we get okay with this this kind of behavior? It's just I, it's just not okay to me, sorry. I don't feel like I need to settle and be with someone, sorry. I don't feel like I need to settle and be with someone who's running and muck, you know, not feeling like I'm gonna find anything else. Run that, whatever fucking reason that makes you, like, you feel like you should condone this rubbish, this like shit. I just don't condone shit like that. I just think it's so bottom barrel. I think men that just behave in such an audacious manner. Like, why is it not absolutely repulsive to you that a man who you think is still in love with you is getting married to someone else? Why doesn't that just make your bones like, why doesn't that just make you feel like ill? Why doesn't that make you feel like I wanna block you and never have contact with you again? Let's think about that for a minute. Let's think about that, you know? While we're here thinking, let's think about that. Guys, the makeup is done, okay? The makeup is done, but we're gonna do a couple more dilemmas because, you know, why not, okay? I have like 10 minutes left. I love it. Lashes, little cool little, you know, light on the inside, bronzy. This is like a matte bronze, except I've got glossy lips, but it's a matte bronze otherwise. Okay, let's get into a few more of these dilemmas before I have to skedaddle, okay? Dating a male fitness trainer who comments on other women's posts. Here is my thing. I'm just not really in the business of dating people that I feel like I need to change and you shouldn't be either. If you have an issue with men commenting on other women's posts, maybe just don't date him. <laughs> maybe just think, you know what? I don't like that thing you do, so I don't wanna date you. The context of the comments, right it's important to a certain degree but also if you don't like that then you don't like that you know some women don't like their men being in other women's life some women don't like seeing their men in the comments some people don't like men that follow a lot of women some people don't do you know what i mean you've got to ask yourself what you like and what you don't like and then anything that you don't like don't gravitate to or don't entertain and that's really like the crux of it i'm scared of going on dates even though i want a relationship figure out what it is that makes you fearful on going on dates address that first before you go on dates i don't believe that if you're fearful of dates that you should go on dates because you're not going to enjoy them it's not going to be an enjoyable experience enjoyable experience dating should be fun and enjoyable it shouldn't be anxiety listen natural nerves are fine but it shouldn't be anxiety inducing. It shouldn't be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It should be like, okay, cool. This is a fun opportunity to get to know if this person's gonna be like my kind of person or if we're gonna get along, or if we're gonna have a good time. That is really the crux of dating. So if you don't feel like you're in that place yet, though you can enjoy dating and really like enjoy the dates. Also dating, dates don't always have to be dinner dates. I, me personally, I'll go on them, but they're not my favorite kind of dates. Like I don't love, sitting down to dinner and talking with us. I, I don't enjoy going for dinner with strangers if I'm being really honest with you. It's not my idea of fun. I, in any capacity, whether that's work, dating, I don't like going for dinner with strangers. That's just my thing. But will I go on a dinner date? Ugh, it's not my thing. I limit the number of dinner dates I go on. So you need to find things that you enjoy doing and then maybe do that in date form. If you know that you like, you know, more things that are like fun, like pottery, for example, 
a paint and sit for a day or go on like pottery making for a day that way you're in an environment that you enjoy and then you are still having the opportunity to get to know this person to see if it could potentially go somewhere don't feel like all dates need to be all dates need to be a dinner date oh let's go sit down or let's go for drinks like ugh, you're not boring like is it everyday drinks i don't like oh god yeah i hate dinner dates i hate drink dates i love him but he's almost 40 he's still at home and just slow with getting his life together guys you guys shouldn't come to me with these kind of dilemmas, honestly. Because then you need to ask yourself what you love. Because you just told me he's almost 40, he still lives at home and he doesn't have his life together. That's essentially what you just told me. So outside of you being attracted to him, and let's say maybe like he's kind, maybe he might be God-fearing. Matter of fact, let me not put traits on him that you may or might not have. If there are things about someone that you do not like, enough to write a dilemma about it maybe you need to ask yourself why you are in that situation with that person because when you start asking yourself you know i love him but the but is telling me that you shouldn't be in that situation or maybe you should find someone that's a bit more aligned to you i'm significantly younger than 40 i don't live with my parents and i have my life together somewhat it's okay for me to have my things that I want from a partner because I am the person that I think I am. So if you are the person that you think you are and you see your life in a certain way, entertaining anything outside of that is just slowing you down. I've just realized I haven't, just realized I haven't put my earrings in. It's just slowing you down. It's just taking you off course. If that is not the partner you've envisioned for your life, maybe just live, leave that person alone because there is someone that will, happy, will happily be with him as he is and here is the thing it's okay for someone to not have like one or two things but you just listen me a laundry list of things that this guy doesn't have that you don't really like <laughs> like that you don't really mess with okay so you need to figure out what's important to you and you need to ask yourself you love him love doesn't necessarily take you to where you need to go you love him but if you have a two year plan to get married, buy a house and stop having kids, is this person gonna be the person that is gonna fulfill that life for you? I listened to a really interesting podcast recently and they were basically saying, well, this woman was basically saying that when she was younger, she was a much older lady. She was basically saying when she was younger, she used to feel like love was enough and she would get to this place of love with these people and they would always it just it would always end like it would always end the relationship would always end the situation would always end and she'd be like but i love them i don't understand why i think these things keep ending and then a younger person gave her the advice of love should be i think it was either like the third or fourth trait in this relationship building situation with this person dynamic whatever i think the first she said was can they live life at the level of life that i want to live or the life the way the level of life that i'm living at um do we have similar values i think there was something else and then it was love so that is the advice i'm giving to you all is that don't make love your number one love should be like here number one for me is do we have the same value not for me personally but number one do we have the same values do we want the same things in life do you want kids and do i want kids do i want a country house and you like city living are you okay with sending your kids this or are you okay with living a life like this or are you okay never having vacations and just working all the time if you are someone that likes to take a break or you like to have a summer that just little things about how you like like to live your life are you god fearing do you you know are you religious things like that that is what operates that's what keeps a family unit moving that is what keeps us operating that's what keeps us vibrating at the same frequency love is literally nothing if you don't have core values that are similar before you even got to the place of loving him sis i'm sure he's been 40 living at home and working on his life this whole time before you even loved him so loki it's a little bit unfair for you to have got to this place with him all these things that you don't like maybe they've always been things that he had and now you're like damn i don't know how much i actually really like this so yeah just be real with yourself do not get to a place of love with someone if you cannot see a future with them point blank period okay um this is gonna be my last one i'm gonna do two more i'm gonna do two more and then we're gonna call it a day okay 
first ones friends that ignore you instead of talking to you or blame it on them being introverted hear me out multiple things can be true at the same time someone can be introverted and an avoidant and still be your friend and here's the thing i completely hear you you can be an understanding friend and you can be you know compassionate to the fact that someone is introverted and isn't necessarily like very combative and isn't very necessarily um someone that addresses things while still understanding that i can only maintain a certain level of friendship with you if you are not going to be honest and open with me when you have an issue having an issue with someone or having things to discuss doesn't always have to turn into an argument or a fight healthy friendships healthy dynamics you can bring up things that someone has done or a way that someone has you know not been a very good friend to you and it doesn't have to be an argument and i think that's something you need to explain to that friend if you want to keep being friends with me and if you want to like stay in a place where we have like a genuine friendship and a genuine connection you really need to get to a place where you can at least talk if you're always avoidant eventually the friendship is just going to fall apart it's natural it's just what happens when someone feels like they're giving more or someone feels like they're more whatever when there's an imbalance in, a, in anything that thing is not going to last so i feel like you really need to have a conversation with this friend about about how healthy of a friendship you can have with someone that isn't open to talking <laughs> okay and being introverted and not being someone that's very like i don't know it's just hard okay it's hard it's not easy but if we are going to be friends you need to get to a place where we can have a conversation about things you can't just ignore me that is completely unacceptable you can't just ignore me because how does that make me feel do you ever think about like and i get it you're going through what you're going through but you can go through what you're going through and also acknowledge even if it's just saying i want to talk to you about something but i'm not in the right place to talk about it right now or i want to talk to you about something but i don't really want to discuss it right now i don't want you to feel like i'm ignoring you but i'm just in, not in a space where i can address it right now but can we talk about it soon or can you just give me a day or two communication it's not always like oh we have to address it now because i because i figured out there's something as an issue sometimes it's just communicating that something is wrong and i will address it with you when i'm in a space where i feel like i can address it with you. oh this links into this question actually of friends that stop talking to you for no reason how to deal with that depends how good of a friend you are okay if you're con <sighs> guys this is what i like using appropriate terms to address people sometimes you are just someone that you're just someone I know. Oh, that's just someone that I've, I've hung out with a couple times. Oh, that's a friend of a friend. Oh, that's just a work colleague. Oh, that's someone that... Everyone isn't a friend, <laughs> okay? Let's get real clear about what we are calling friend. Someone that stops talking to you for no reason, you cannot be my friend. That is impossible. It's impossible that my friend will just stop talking to me for no reason. That doesn't mean I'm not going to address it with you. I'm a firm believer in addressing things. And if you don't necessarily want to address it with that friend off the bat, I think it's okay to seek like a second opinion because sometimes I might be in my head about a situation that's really not that. And it's not until I've spoken to someone else and they're like, yeah, I don't think it's that. Yeah, I don't really think it's that. It kind of helps me rationalize the situation a little bit because I can be a bit of a hothead. I can kind of go and all get all, all guns blazing like on some like da 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 da. And like sometimes this, it really isn't all that. This isn't related to your situation because there's no way you can just stop talking to me. I'm just saying, I understand how I am as a person so because of that when I'm in certain situations or certain things trigger me or I'm taken to a place I really have to sit and think is this the reality or is this what I'm making it in my head that is not to be confused with what you're going through though if I call someone a friend that means that I can be able to call you up on the phone or I can text you or I can voice note you I can bring up things with you at any time okay if I feel like damn I've not heard from this girl in times i haven't heard from this guy in ages i'm gonna be like are you okay are you good because maybe they're going through something maybe it's something that has absolutely nothing to do with you but your head you made that all about you and now you're gonna go in there on some i can't believe you stopped talking to me like why have you stopped talking to me maybe just go on a hey haven't heard from you a little bit is everything okay are you good 
And then based on that, you can decide if it's something to do with you or if they're just really going through something. Because sometimes your friend is losing their mind. It has absolutely nothing to do with you, okay? And sometimes, you know, as much as we want people to be like, hey, I'm going through some things, like you won't be hearing from me. Sometimes what I'm going through, I'm so deep in what I'm going through, I'm not thinking about anyone else. And as a friend, a genuine friend, you need to recognize when someone is just going through some things, okay? Sometimes people just need a minute. And if you come to me and try and make it about you, now I'm not only am I dealing with what I'm dealing with, now I have to deal with you as well. That's not very nice. <laughs> it's not good. It's good to be able to acknowledge when there's been like, oh, something's a bit different here. First of all, make sure this is okay first. If they're okay, they're good, they're cushy, they're living life, everything's good. And I don't mean on social media, I mean you've spoken to them on the phone and they are good, they said nothing is wrong, everything is blessed. Right, now we need to address why you haven't spoken to me. Why haven't I heard from you then? And then that's something you address. But initially off the bat, make sure they're good first. And then if they are, address that. If they're not, then obviously that conversation is going to be what that conversation is going to be. Let's do a quick fragrance. I think I'm just going to do Tom Ford Black, Tom Ford Black Orchid. Okay. <sighs> that's the end of today's video. That was so good. I've got lipstick all over my teeth, that is not good. Girl talk, girl chat video, I hope you guys loved it. Getting ready with me, having a little chat, having a little gander, love the way the makeup turned out. If you want something a little bit more detailed, let me know. But I promise you, I probably already have something very detailed. And if I do, I'll link it up here for you guys so you can check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.